right, so uh, welcome back to Outdoors with the Morgans. We got Christian here. Hi. We got uh, the garden's looking good. It's still a little bit damp. It's not too bad. What are your plans for this year? I'm gonna plant a little less. I planted way too many beans and a few other vegetables last year. Plant one less pumpkin. Focus more on keeping the bugs off it if possible. Yeah. How many? Now, how many pumpkin pumpkins are you gonna plant? Two. Two. Total. Last year I had three. Narrowed it down to two. I'm just gonna focus on a couple. And last year. year's. What What do you estimate the weight at? Uh, I think it was six twenty-five or six fifty-five. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Right around there. Good. The smaller one was in the 400s, I think. Right. So you're going to go all in on two this year. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. And then uh, when will you plant the garden? Probably not for a few more weeks, huh? Yeah, that roll, um, what is it, uh, after Labor Day or whatever, or, or Memorial Day. Yeah. That always seems to work for the vegetables. But the pumpkins, I'm going to plant indoors in maybe a week and then plan on moving them out into the garden beginning of May. Okay. Yeah, and I'll have to put a hoop house and stuff over it. Right. Frost. Yeah, it's it's deceiving. It's still kind of early right yeah, now. You yeah. know, but. I tried too early the past three or four years, and yeah. no matter what, every time I screw myself. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that is nice looking dirt, though. Oh yeah, very satisfying. Yeah. All right, man. Well, if you need anything, holler. Thank you. Yep. All right, just got back up to the house from uh, tilling Christian's garden. And by the way, this is a RTR. 1274 RT reverse tine love a reverse tine tiller works really well so the hunt man came out to see what's going on uh, but it is Saturday evening and I was very busy today but I didn't film anything I was actually over at Tom's place from concrete with the hosses and we got a sawmill all set up and uh, I didn't make a video because Tom did. It will be on his channel, Concrete with the Hosses. But uh, we ended up sawing a nice little red oak. And wait till you see what we were going to try to saw. We'll get to it at some point. Uh, but he had a friend down the road that had a big tree. It was like 42, 44 inches in diameter. And he took his excavator down. And he actually got it on his trailer. I couldn't believe it. Two big logs. They were massive. Wait do you see this video. That'll be coming up on Tom's channel in a week or two. But anyway, I think that's about it for now. I will uh, report back tomorrow morning. All right, it is now Easter Sunday. Absolutely beautiful day today. I just brought the skid loader up from down at the equipment shed. Got it all fueled up, greased up, and I put the grapple on it. We're going to be using this out in the woods there on the uh, little clearing project and plus cleaning up some of those downed trees. Maybe later on this afternoon or this evening we'll see how it goes if not it'll be tomorrow morning for sure uh, but i haven't used this grapple much at all but i'm going to it's a vernig the v60 series i really like the design of this i think it's going to work great on the 97-2 i like the real long shanks on the bottom and the replaceable teeth for uh you know ripping out stumps rooting things out of the ground and it is 84 inches wide so it sticks out just past the tracks a little bit everyone's actually over at uh, melissa's mom and dad's right now except for the hunt man he was taking a little nap so i said uh we'll just hang out here for a little bit when he wakes up we may run over there in a little bit but next on the agenda, I need to wash up the Jeep. Daughter Eva, looks like she was out mudding in it or something. All right. I think what I'm going to do is uh, hit it with the pressure washer first just to get some of the heavy stuff off of it. And then we'll put the foam cannon on it and uh, hit it with that.
right, got the Jeep all cleaned up. Now normally, when I use that foam cannon, if the vehicle's not real dirty, I don't do any hand washing. Uh, this time, I did do a little bit of hand washing as well. But yeah, it came out pretty good. This color is called Snazzleberry. I really like the color, but... But you'd think Jeep could have came up with a better name than Snazzleberry. Maybe like Punisher Purple or something like that. Yeah. Here's the uh, foam cannon. I showed this last fall from Chemical Guys. And this is Honeydew Snow Foam Auto Wash. This is my first jug. And I've used it quite a bit, so it lasts a long time. I will put a link in the description if anyone wants one of these. All right, so Eve and I, we're heading down to my sister's for Easter. Yep. Your mom will be down in a bit. She wants to take the four-wheeler, but we haven't been down those trails in a while. So I'm actually going to take the skid loader down first, clear the trails, and you'll follow me. Since all the windstorms. I know. Could be bad out there. It, down that way, I think it'll be all right. Out there by the mini cabins where it was uh, the worst. Yeah, it looks bad. So don't try passing me or anything. Okay. Gonna it, arrive in style. It's pretty fast. Skid loader. Okay.
So I just got out of the machine and I checked my phone and uh, there was a tick crawling across my phone. I think as mild as this past winter has been, it'll probably be a pretty bad year for ticks, but it's just one of the things you got to deal with here. I'll tell you what I do do though to help prevent them. I always wear uh, light colored pants when I'm out here in the woods. At least when you wear these, uh, you can kind of see the little buggers on there and get them off before they dig into you. Normally once a year, maybe once every two years actually, uh, I'll have to dig a tick out. And when I do, we have this thing, it's called, it used to be called Teladoc. It's not what it is with our new health insurance, but you can just do like a video call with a doctor, say, hey, I just dug out a tick. Uh, I've never had that red bullseye or anything like that, but if you call or if you take this antibiotic that they prescribe you, I think it's just one pill. If you take that within 48 hours, it greatly reduces your uh, risk of Lyme's disease. Obviously, I'm not a doctor. That's just going by what I can remember. But anyway, this grapple, awesome. Really, really nice here. Matched with the uh, big skid loader, uh, man, it does a really nice job. This is kind of what I'm after, this look right here when this is all done out here. And if I can get it like this, I can literally put a rake on the tractor, rake this, and uh, it'll be ready for seed. We still have a bunch more work to do out here in the morning. Uh, yeah, I think tomorrow morning I'll have a couple hours. I'll bring a chainsaw out. I'll kind of shorten some of this stuff up and I will be able to save uh, some firewood out of here. I know I'm putting some in the pile. It's just the way it is. I don't want to spend, you know, all summer out here cleaning this up. And there's really not that much. You know, once you get down to that five and six inch diameter stuff, I mean, everything you see in here, I don't even know what's there. Two cords of wood, maybe, if that. And if I can get this all cleaned up in a day, say eight hours with the skid loader, versus going through all this stuff to pull out two cords of wood, it'd probably take me, I don't know, it'd take a couple days, three, four days, to try to salvage all that. So for me, I just want to get it done, and it's really not worth the time. I always get comments on that. Oh, you're wasting firewood. And yeah, I do sometimes. Uh, but to me, time is our most valuable resource. And we all only have so much of it. So I attempt to make the best use of my time, I guess you could say. Oh, one more thing I wanted to mention about this grapple. Uh, you kind of got to take it easy with this thing because... Uh, you don't want to just go diving right into a pile and have a stick or a log headed towards the glass because you could put it right through the glass. I just like to kind of take it easy with it. And, uh, but my goodness, that thing will pick up. I mean, you could have like four or five whole trees in this thing root ball, top, the logs, everything, and just pick the whole thing up like nothing. And then, you know, it's 40, 50 feet long. And you got to watch turning amongst these other trees. You just don't want to go real fast with it. But uh, that's a big skid loader and a big grapple. It uh, And it's heavy duty. You don't have to worry about bending this thing. It works good. I don't know if you saw, just using the top here, tilt it out all the way and you can back drag it. That's how you get it looking like this right here. But uh, yeah, it won't take long to clean all this up. I was going to try to reach that one right there, but I couldn't quite get it. I can probably get it with the excavator, but that's kind of sketchy because the other part up there is broke off as well. I'll get it down. And then uh, this week, though, the weather looks fantastic. We'll get this all cleaned up, get a big old pile right here in the middle. I'll take this red oak down, and once we get some rain, we'll flame on, burn this all down, push everything into the center, light it up again and that'll be about it but anyway i think that's about it for today's video i uh, appreciate y'all being here and i will catch you on the next one